<laughs> the bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned the rest. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red, hair unkempt, wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. You'll be looking like a pansy without the chops. A fucking pansy. A fresh start looms ahead. Clean yourself up and be born anew. As you look at the floorboards in this corner of the shack, it's clear one of them isn't quite level with the others. The edge of a floorboard next to it looks scratched. Hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust below. Nothing particular catches your eye. Looks like more reeds. There might be something hidden inside the sand though. Something bad. Someone's night thoughts, a last resort, a bad idea. You stick your hand in and start combing through the sand. Dry, not like outside. Fine dust. And then, something hard wrapped in paper. A small cylindrical object. You pull it out. A bullet. A 9mm bullet, to be exact. Fit for all muzzle loaders of that calibre. The floorboard isn't interested. Maybe the washerwoman is. You have enough to confront her with. Holding the bullet, you get the feeling. This isn't ammunition against you. It's for herself. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Damn that girl. And without anger, a long and harsh life has taught her not to buckle under pressure. A bullet? You didn't put it there, did you? She did. Gone and hid things in there? She's usually a good tenant, and not a stupid one either. Yes, I let my room to that ruby girl. As I've done before when she's been in trouble or just looking for solitude. I've made it clear, we welcome all kinds of people here. She came last Friday, left on Monday in a hurry. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? She seems genuinely worried about her previous tenant. She's seen her hiding out from trouble before. But this seems different. That's for the police to find out. Right there. Please answer each question to the best of your ability. I'm sure we have a few. Yes, early with the dogs, around 8 o'clock, I think. I cleaned it, like I always do. No. The truth, sire. She's good company. Knows how to talk to an old woman. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation. So I really appreciate that about her. 
Did she talk to you much during her last day? No, she was mostly silent this time, kept to herself. She tried not to let it show, but I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cast a few lines, but this time she mostly stayed in her room. How would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. You could ask her about your hunch, that it was a desperate measure. See if she thinks Ruby fits the bill. I do tell. Exit from what? The lieutenant stops writing for a moment. He looks at you, then at the old woman. No, she's a fighter. Not a quitter. Like you sometimes get, son. She really believes that. Not that I know of, though she was into nice music. She once showed me a few mixtape milieu she'd made. Although I guess she was pretty handy with the mechanical and technical stuff. Even fixed the heater in the shack. You should be thankful for that. She may simply have kept the equipment elsewhere. I don't know. Further up the coast, she tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on that door screeched like a cat in heat. Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots, heading up north. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. You'll never find her, you know. She knows the coast like the back of her hand. You only just arrived. I wouldn't worry about that, man. We are persistent. Are you sure you would rather stay here? Get a nice cozy fire going in the heater? Seems like a better idea to me. No, you can do it. You still have plenty of juice in you before you drop. Behind the cinder block houses, old pre-war ruins rise to the sky like dark palaces. The wind calls. What more do you want? Yes. One thing, officer. If you do find her, please go easy on her. She really means it. It's an honest plea. She's a good girl. Whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. Rigorous self-critique. Here it is. Hard facts from the man you are. You once jerked off in the locker room and were caught. You held a young woman by the arm and kept her in your apartment for 20 minutes against her will. That's right. These are not flights of fancy. These are real deeds, Harry, emerging from the darkness of your past. You tried shooting a fleeing suspect in the foot, but hit him in the pelvis, crippling him for life. And above all, you let life defeat you. All the gifts your parents gave you, all the love and patience of your friends, you drowned in a neurotoxin. You let misery win and it will keep on winning till you die, or overcome it. vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. Maybe it's just a storm drain for the sewer. No idea. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. 
We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Revachol sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. In conclusion, she could be under any building. I hope not. There's no echo and no answer. bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, tomorrow is just a whisper away. Looks like tomorrow never came. Above the mural, a collapsed roof, broken windows set in walls that are cracking and will soon also fall, and the coastal breeze rustling and sighing in the remains of the edifice. Feld Electrical. How ironic. All these dark rooms. Feld Electrical. You only know them as a small company that makes ink cartridges. Looks like they used to be big. There's something in the wind. Sometimes the only way to go forward is to fail first. Indeed, somehow you knew it was here. An urban ruin gutted by looters that once used to consume money and dispense warmth and light. In there? She could. Or she could be in the identical ruin over there. Or in that boat shack. In that church tower, maybe. Why single out this one building? Suddenly, all is quiet. There is no cold hand brushing against your forehead. No rustle in the reeds. The wind has died down or gone behind a corner. You only hear distant waves washing the coast. The ruin in front of you is silent as a tomb. Trying to talk to the wind, the city, whatever you thought would happen, did not. And now, you're just standing there, with your hands fallen to your side. Is trying to talk to the city something you've done before? Is it in your secret repertoire? A trick for when you're out of ideas? A prayer of sorts? To Revachon? How do we? I was really hoping she'd be in the village. <sighs> okay. She's probably north of the village, and this place is a peninsula. I think there's people west of here. We could ask them. Indeed. You hear what sounds like two men arguing where the lieutenant is pointing. And then there's a church. If I were a murder suspect, I would not hide in the most prominent building here. But who knows? Maybe she's reckless. Or spiritual. She could be looking for refuge. Anyway, we do it the old-fashioned way. Sector by sector. Go over the whole peninsula. Ask the locals, enter the places where we can enter first, like we did in the village. Then, if we're desperate, we can look where we can't enter. Bunkers, tomb drainage, this place, I'm sure it won't come to that. Walk the coast, the old boardwalk, the reeds. You can always come back here and talk to the wind again. Look where it already got you. An adventure awaits. An adventure on the windswept urban coast. Buckle up and raise your collar. This search is going to be wet and cold. The once bright mural towers above you, saying, A breeze, like a quiet sigh, moves over you. The cool air breaks across your body. It breaks
brings the salt of the sea into your lungs. Go to the children of the big sea. The wind rushes away, leaving you where you were, on the rotting boards of the felled building. Officer, are you okay? It looked like we lost you for a second. Okay, when you're ready, officer. Guillaume Le Million. Bad news. Guillaume Le Million did not become a cop. In 38, he went on a tour to the Xinyao province in Safre, where he died of autoerotic asphyxiation. His body was found hanging from a decorative dragon tree in his junior suite amid drug paraphernalia, unwholesome objects, and the Sylvia Trainer single Wonderland skipping in the background. And yes, you can take this as a metaphor for Revachol in the 30s, and also as a warning. I'm Gary. How do you do, officer? Yellow man. I mean, officer. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. Interesting. This is something to ask him about after a little probing first. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Degenerates? This man respects authority too much. To see the truth inscribed upon thine own visage. Pretend thou art a paragon of virtue. I've been tempted on occasion, but someone has to stay strong for Revacol. He pronounces Revacol with a hard K, unlike other people. Serious question time. This man is no innocent. No one is. I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. It's a secret right, a very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. But still, he's definitely one of us. Longs for the old days, the old ways. He's likely to know how to turn back time. Ask him. Oh, so that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great, great to hear someone's finally taken care of that. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. 
that's all. He's not feeling very comfy in his clothes, is he? Strange. He didn't kill him or anything, but there's something going on here. My mug? W why would you think that? His eyes widen at the sight of the mug. He's seen it before, all right? Really? I hear it all the time. All in jest, of course. No offense meant to anyone. Okay, okay, I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. You're not going to find me, are you? Whew. Thank you. You won't regret this. I won't use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. I know a guy who works with the trash collection services, CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Bohemians run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. Officer, please. Let me explain. It's not like that. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged. And I saw him stripped naked, all the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. Okay, I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well... I threw the mug there, and the clothes, too. Right. It was just civic duty. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads, against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard this sound before. But where? What sound? Really? There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash, could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. Every day, the wind shifts the reeds and whatever was left in them. Tambourines and condom wrappers, plastic and glass bottles, the smell of decay. Armor? No. I, I mean, yes, of course. I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. An infant could see he's not telling the truth, but he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. There's something going on here. You should observe him more closely after this topic is concluded. I hope I can help your investigation in my small way. Don't be so relieved yet, Gary. This bad cop may have been in your apartment, admiring your mug collection. Perhaps a little intimidation? No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. What does he do then? This feels like a good opportunity to dominate him. Oh, 
this and that. Sometimes. See? He's been evasive. Shake him up. Show him who's boss. I just didn't want to bore you with unnecessary detail, officer. I work as a special courier. You know, urgent deliveries, overnight deliveries, deliveries to out-of-the-way locations. Oh, I don't know the contents, officer. Part of my job is discretion. He's trying too hard to seem untroubled by your question. The rigidity in his posture gives him away. No, no. That's far too dangerous. Besides, dealing drugs isn't for people like me and you, officer. No, nothing like that. I leave that to companies with hundreds of years of tradition in arms manufacturing. No need for an amateur like me cutting in. What do I look like? A pansy? Besides, that kind of cavorting goes against the community values that would strengthen our city. Okay, fine. You got me. I'm a special topping pie delivery courier. You heard me. I deliver topping pies. It's temporary. I'm looking for another job. Not many jobs for good men out there these days. They're wheat-free, and vegan, and huge. That's basically it. I'm a pie delivery man. How about we change the subject? Yum. Did someone say topping pie? Sure. If you want. I could get you one for free if we ever meet in the city, officer. Wheat free. Just ask me later. Not many Seolites here, or anywhere, other than Sale. I meant no offense, truly. Oh, yes, of course he is. I was just speaking about his connections. Let's change the subject, okay? Sure do, officer. His eyes narrow slightly. He's wondering where this is going. In my home, yes. When I was going to... How did you know? Mr. Clare unlocked my apartment? So you work for Everard Clare? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. As he lowers his tone, he hunches his back. Whatever it is, tell him I'm silent as the grave. I was probably talking too loud in the whirling the other night about some theories. I won't do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you, or the Union, just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The weather vein has turned. He cannot be unturned. He clearly liked his squirming. He may even have changed his mind about the whole door opening operation. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. No, he's scrawny. Try again. Yes, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles, stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... I was ashamed of what I did. 
and I didn't want you to know. We're not detecting falsehood, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary, what's going on? Later, Morale. I've got apologizing to do. No, you've got explaining to do. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. This is it. This will protect your mortal shell. Don it and live. Everyone was picking those pieces off him, and I was watching them do it. And they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there, and... I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Only the caress was left. So I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it'd give you guys trouble, I... I wouldn't have... Fuck. We're detecting sincere contrition here, sire. He's not trying to flatter anyone. It's okay. It was a loose end, and you are tying it up now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you Yellow Man. Sea Light officers commanded the Suzerain's navy. Most of them sided with the king when... It's difficult to say what the lieutenant thinks of this historic apology. His face does not belie emotions. Because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you, but... The hell, Gary? You in trouble? I'll explain later. I always thought it was the Union, but I sure as hell won't go around saying that anymore. You have my word. I don't know, and I won't be running my mouth on this subject anymore. This is all he knows. Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. I, I won't mess with Mr. Clare either. You have my word. Do I know how to turn back time? Is that a trick question? The lieutenant crosses his arms and turns to look at you. You'd better be going somewhere case-related with this. Phew. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, of course there are theories out there. Well... There's a very interesting cryptid known as the Semper Ma, and a certain tribe of ancient kits who practice digital castigation. Though, frankly, I don't know how compelling you'll find that theory. And then you hear rumors that the Seolites possess technology that actually lets them move through time like it's a corridor. Back and forth, you see. Cryptids. Actually, it's a so-called colonial animal, presenting as a large singular body when in actuality it's a congregation of tiny organisms working in unison. It's found in the subtropical jungles of Samara, extremely difficult to spot as it appears to the untrained eye like common mud. It's thought to be impossible to catch and very dangerous. Yes, it blends in with the jungle floor. Unsurprisingly, it's become the subject of many local myths. Some have even described it as an angry forest spirit or a manifestation of the forest itself. I once heard a story about a whole village disappearing overnight without a trace. Can you imagine that? Just a large patch of mud where the settlement was. The whole area is completely abandoned now. 
Locals won't even go near it. They swear the mud writhes and occasionally grows strange shapes. Jungles, villages, mud. He better not be wasting your time. I'm getting there, officer. You see, the Semper Ma has also evolved a curious defensive mechanism. When threatened, it has the ability to revert back to an earlier stage in its own life cycle. It may even be able to do this continually, ad infinitum. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. It's believed that the mechanism by which the Semper Ma reverts actually reverses the flow of time itself. By about 4.5 seconds. Well, you see, the fascinating thing about it is that this temporal reversion is said to extend to anything touching the Semper Ma at the moment of reversal. And attack it over and over again, you could theoretically punch your way back to the Franco-Nigerian era. Like an exoskeleton, powered by fear. Assuming you survive the encounter, but that's way down the line, of course. It's true that every expedition up to now has failed, and that several have vanished without a trace. But the potential is there, officer. It just can't be denied. Oh yes, it can. Easily. And personally, it seems easier than accessing deep secret seal-like technology and more civilized than digital castigation. But to each his own. Well, how else did they get so far ahead of everyone in the tech race? Absolutely. That definitely helps. But that alone? I don't buy it. Come on, officer. Everybody knows about it. The stuff they've got, most people here can't even dream of it. Believe me, it's there. Technology so advanced, it defies description. Because he's only now discovering he has no idea what he's talking about. But that's nothing. Just wait till you learn how they've managed to get so far ahead of us. Isn't it obvious? Someone's been feeding them a little trickle of tech down from someplace no one else can reach. No, why would they be? No, I'm talking about the future. The Seolites are helping themselves from the future, and every little incremental improvement they receive in the present has major ripples all along the timeline. That creates a loop, right? The more advanced tech they send here, the more advanced they become in the future, which means that by smuggling ever more advanced tech down on the past, I'm sure you can see where this is heading. Within this self-contained logic bubble, a loop. He is not wrong. Now that is a paradox. A statement seemingly contradictory or opposed to common sense, and yet perhaps true, or perhaps not. I don't know, officer. I think future Revacol might also have a few aces up its own sleeve. The people are starting to wake up, you see. God, I hope he meant it sarcastically. If not, I don't really see how he can continue being a police detective. Though I suppose this still doesn't help you manipulate time personally. Perhaps you should consider digital castigation. Well... Essentially, it's a grief ritual practiced by certain ancient Seminese tribes. Traditionally, after the death of a village leader, 
the bereaved are supposed to cut off a segment of their own fingers. What makes it really disturbing is the fact that they bite off bits of their children's fingers too. Even babies. Imagine that. Please note, tales of digital mutilation are a common trope of racist pseudo-histories, completely unsubstantiated by the archaeological record. I'm getting there. See, the practice is derived from Semenese finger counting. Each segment of the finger represents one hour, so they count up to twelve with one hand, disregarding the thumb, of course. By removing one segment from their fingers, they remove the corresponding hour from their life. That's what they believe, anyway. No, no. <laughs> There is a discrepancy between how these Seminese tribes count and how they tell time. As I explained, they count up to 12 on their fingers, but they divide the day into 15 parts. But that's a whole other discussion. One you absolutely don't have time for. Let's be done with this idiocy. Oh! Well, this is embarrassing, but I'm really not sure what else to tell you. I don't know what to tell you, officer. I got all my information straight from Truth Hunt. If you can't believe a radio program called Truth Hunt, who can you believe? Truth Hunt is a popular radio program. Each week, its two eccentric hosts explore a variety of topics, from cryptids and conspiracy theories to ethnic warfare and the historical man from Yeomdal, a radio counterpart to the Guardian fringe science magazine, Paradox B. This guy has proved to be a dead end. A dissatisfied growl in your abdomen. But the hard endure and the true kingsman keeps searching. Vions, brother. The night is darkest before the dawn. Metal and plastic contraption bobs up and down amidst the trembling reeds. At first, it just looks like trash. But if you look closer... That over there. Must be the boy class you told us about. The one she hid her passport in. We should take a look. Ooh, hidden things. Secrets. Lies. You lift the boy out of the water without much effort. It's not tied to anything. The cords dangling from the bottom appear to have been cut. The number 11 has been written on the yellow plastic. It hasn't been in the water for very long, but it's already discolored and slimy with silt. A latch holds it close, but only just barely. The brittle metal of the latch has cracked. Simple construction. Very unsafe. There's something in there, splashing around. It smells like you would expect it to smell. A concentrated version of the coast. Salt, industrial slop and decay. A shot glass's worth of seawater pours out. Some algae and nothing else. Well, damn. We still got here too late. There's nothing of use here anymore. I have no idea. Or think we do. This is a small loose end, either way. Not important, I hope. Might have been Klaasje. Might have been the people after her. Might have been a local drunk. 
We should go. You could ask the miss what she thinks. Later, if you have the time. Though you doubt she'll tell you much at this point. Here we go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gem. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements ungainly. He looks like your understanding of a scientist. To what do I owe the pleasure? Hey, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. The 881 is a raised motorway that separates Martinez from Jamrock. The labyrinth of streets underneath it makes it difficult to pass. Not like walking over a nice water lock. You broke the water lock with a motor carriage? There was a billboard in the canal. Not a vehicle. It said Samaran Butter. Why? Insane. Yes, okay, good. But you said the water lock is fixed now. So we can go back. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we're going. His hands are large and weather-worn, but also used to delicate, precise work. For all his passion, this man is diligent and patient. You could learn things from him. I'm afraid not, officer. I've been busy digging around in the reeds for days, looking for signs of insect activity. I'm less interested in mammalian concerns, to be perfectly honest. The lieutenant takes a short note in his notebook, then gestures for you to proceed 